Even in the wild, I'ma praise you. Even in the wild. Even in the wild, I'ma praise you. Even in the wild. Brothers and my sisters, where you at? Pick yourself up off the mat. If you struggle busting with it, gotta get back to the fact. He the way, the truth, the light. While I'm building on the rock. And he took them nails for you, whether you feel it or not. Without emotion, it's a lot about faith. Then you can't do it by strength. It's only by God's grace, whether I'm faced with adversity. Either way, I'm giving glory to God. And I'm pushing through this opposition. No competition. My God won't fail. I'm in for life. I ain't looking to bail. I'm throwing flames on the track. By the word, I pray he opens their eyes. I pray we burn with a fire inside. I'm speaking life like. Feel like I'm in the wild where the beast at. I feel my face struggling where the peace at. I feel a heavy weight where the ease at. Get this weight up off me, I don't need that. Cause even in the wild, I'ma praise you. And even through these trials, I'ma thank you. And even when it hurts, I'ma pray through. I'ma break through. I'ma break through. Dios te bendiga. God bless all your people. Emerging through the flame like, go ahead, turn that heat up. Got soul the same, can't kick our feet up. I'm in for life, don't need no prenup. I'm hollering Team Jesus. You repping fake or real? Are you committed to the king like a Laker deal? You gotta weather the storm, weather the weather extreme of the norm, crown of the thorns. Got sins on his body, he did not have to. Grace was repentance and simple math, dude. And we need the grace of salvation to make us his child. Gotta praise him through the storm, even in the wild. Feel like I'm in the wild where the beast at. How y'all doing tonight? Everybody doing all right? Yes, sir. Hey, uh, you know, awesome night. Um, I'm from here. My name's Destin. Um, it's an honor for me. I grew up here. I went to Choctaw. Um, and to come back home uh, and be a part of a night that they call Night of Integrity is, uh, is humbling for me. Um, cause I, I haven't always, uh, been a person of integrity. So, um, it, it's awesome to be a part of tonight. Um, you know, tonight is about, it's, it's about us just experiencing God together tonight. And so, uh, what I want to do before we move forward, if you guys are cool, I just want to invite God into this place. Uh, cause at the end of the day, it's not about me. Uh, it's not about corn. Um, it's about God and, and it's about him wanting to have a personal relationship with you. So if you guys would, if you just bow your heads real quick, we're just gonna we're just gonna welcome the Lord, uh, Father God. I thank you so much uh, for the opportunity um, to just carry your name, to carry the name of Jesus into this place. Um, God, I thank you for every person that has worked to put this night together, and we just invite you, and we thank you that you're already here, God, because your word is true, and your word says where two or more are gathered, I am there. And so we thank you for your presence, God. We open our hearts, we open our minds to you, and we, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody doing all right? It's kind of weak. Everybody doing all right? Um, so let hallelujah be my highest praise. And I was bound by sin's grips till he broke them chains. And now I'm walking free, no shame, guilt, no condemnation. And I'm certain in my decision, no more contemplation. Matter of fact, I'm taking this good news that he gave me, spreading it daily. Not saying I'm perfect, I do not deserve it. This mercy and grace he has shown me is crazy. Amazing that the Father not only loved us so much, he would send his one and only king jesus but that while we were still sinners it pleased the father to sacrifice his son to redeem us so please just take a moment to ponder don't squander the opportunity to fasten your gaze on the one whose love is described as how wide how long how high and how deep you and i used to be steeped in sin up to our chin barely breathing until the Spirit of God raised Christ from the dead, took the keys from death and said, now I'll be leaving. So I urge not to harden your hearts today. He is worthy of all honor, all glory. And so we lift him higher with praise. Follow me on Instagram, Destin Music. Eat all my followers. Yeah. 
uh, he made the sun, moon, and stars, made the highest mountains, to the depths of the oceans and all the life throughout him, gave the eagle wings, made the lion king, then God made man in his image and picked us on his team, and he sent his one and only to make the sinner holy, blood shed, dead, raised all to him for his glory. Now we sons and daughters reppin' for the most high Holy and we blameless for the king that's worth a oh my I believe, I believe that your love won't ever fail me now I believe, I believe that your love Hey, if you guys are cool, stand up for me, stand up I believe, I'm believing that you will do Believing that you still do Believing that you still you I believe I'm believing that your word stands True above the world's plan True above this world stands And I wish I would've took your word from the jump Instead I gave you the bump Then life it threw me some lumps Now looking back it's 2020 A lot of things While I was disengaged Still your love it never changed But if that was me I would've chunked you the deuce I would've cut ties loose And said that's probably no use But thank you God for your love And that that love stands firm Kind of love that is through grace, the kind that can't be earned. I believe, I believe that your love won't ever fail me now. I believe, I believe that your love won't ever fail me. I believe, I'm believing that you will do, believing that you still do, believing that you still you. I believe, I'm believing that your word stands True above the world's plan True above this world stands He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil for you are with me Walk through, through the valley of the shadow of death Still I will fear no evil, evil will be gasping for breath And at the name of Jesus every knee gon' bow to the King All those in heaven, under earth, and all of those in between That's you and me, co-worker, classmate That's your neighbor, that's your mom, that's my pops One question, he is savior by his stripes you have in and them strikes, they ain't no metaphor Finish what I'm pressing toward, living like I'm repping for him Ain't perfect and I know I'll never be Whether I feel free or not Either way I will believe in at the end of the day It's either sin or it's grace When you see him face to face Did you believe? I believe, I believe Y'all still doing alright? I believe, I believe I'm working hard up here Y'all doing alright? I wrote this uh, spoken word when I, when I look back on my life as a, as a high school student, as a college student, um, all the things that dominated my life. Now I'm free from them, uh, but at one point in time, I was, I was literally a slave to sin. There is such thing, whether, whether you believe that or not, there is such thing as being a slave to sin. I stood no chance. Uh, <clears throat> See, I remember being younger, trying to win the approval of other people around my age who they ain't even like me. But now I realize out of seven billion people who inhabit the earth, there ain't another individual like me. I'm staying true to myself. I don't need weed, sex, or pills to make D. Holland feeling like he the man. All I gotta do is open up the holy word of Almighty God, no grease. I gotta stick to the plan. See, being average ain't an option. I was made in his image, taking advantage of the favor that I have in the Christ. And if I didn't, it would be like walking empty handed straight out the store with nothing to show after paying the price. It's simply hard to imagine. The Father's love be burning more hot than dragons. He got a heart that you can't even imagine. Word a double-edged sword. Put it up against the darkest opponents. It's more deadly than bazookas and MAC-10s. Honor higher than the tip of Mount Everest. 
His presence fresher than the Prince of Bel-Air. I'm about to do the Carlton dance. Worshiping the Father through praise, moving my body like I just don't care. I'm about to throw the kitchen sink on the table. I gotta give him my all, no pride. Can't hold nothing back. I'm looking like a kick returner. Watch the way your boy could run with the rock to the crib with that run back, with that run back. I lift my hallelujah each and every day. This life here today and then it's gone away. So with this life I got, I'ma let him see that I'ma leave my God, get a legacy. I lift my hallelujah each and every day. This life here today and then it's gone away. So with this life I got, I'ma let him see that I'ma leave my God, get a legacy. Legacy, legacy, I'm over here leaving my legacy. Not in a pill shape, a high on a drug, but off of the one who died on the cross only to show me his love. So with this breath in my lungs, while I got blood in my veins, I'ma live life in a way, make them think of my king when they mention my name. So when I'm dead and gone, legacy still live on. My king is still on the throne, I'ma praise him to the day that I'm gone. I lift my hallelujah each and every day. This life here today and then it's gone away. So with this life I got, let them see, I'ma leave my God, get a legacy. I lift my hallelujah each and every day. This life here today and then it's gone away. So with this life I got, I'ma let them see. Then I'ma leave my God, get a legacy. I'm over here yelling out unity. One ain't as strong as it's two or three. All of this talk about legacy got me like, what they gonna say in my eulogy? Hope it goes deeper than he was a decent man. Hoping they really reflect that they see my life part of his kingdom plan And whether you see it or not, you're leaving a legacy I'm choosing repentance, I'm choosing forgiveness, I'm choosing a life of expectancy I used to make all my choices on which one felt good in the moment Now I live life by the spirit, all of these choices I own them I've had some chances and blown them, God never left me alone And soon said it best, squeeze it and hold it cause all of these moments are golden And maybe they'll admit it when they're gone When our spirit's living on through the lyrics in the song you can I lift my hallelujah each and every day This life here today Yeah, yeah, yeah This life I got, I'm a little scene Yeah, that's my number one fan I lift my hallelujah each and every day. This life here today. Y'all still good? Y'all excited to hear from my man Brian Welch tonight? I was, I was his bodyguard back in the green room. Somebody came in, he was like, can I get a pic? I was like, hold up, bro. Let me see your badge real quick, bro. Really? <laughs> hey, that song's called Legacy. Uh, I'm releasing that song May 10th. Um, I think it's like 99 cents. So save up, put a little aside, help a brother out. <laughs> in the heat of the moment, you gotta squeeze it and own it. And in the valley of trouble, you come out ready to rumble. Keep throwing fists with the demons, and if your knuckles the Bible, you'll be standing with Jesus and you'll be holding the title. See through the rise and the fall and through the ups and the downs on this roller coaster life that wants to whip you around. Keep your eyes on him. That's the great I am. Jesus Christ, the Nazareth, the one who saved us from sin. See, his name has the power to take your past and devour. All habits down the drain like a baptism shower. You dig? That's my signal for the next song. They call me the you know what I'm saying? I got one more left in me. Y'all good? Come on. Come on, man. Yeah. They won't hurt you. A little this, a little that. That's that crib tonight. Oh, yeah, it's lit tonight. They sipping with the Sprite. They smoking with the pipe. They popping pills tonight. They catching pills tonight. That's crypto, 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 crib tonight. That's that crib tonight. That's that crib tonight. You ain't living by his word. You ain't living right. That's that crib tonight. That's that crib tonight. You're just living for the world. Yeah. The truth of the matter is, he created you. 
in his image, family lineage, then he came for you. And I know he came to do what only angels knew, to take your sin, your condemnation, and your shame from you. Earn it, you cannot buy it, and you can't escape the truth just because you deny it. And this ain't a set of just some rules and regulations, just the father trying to keep his kids from danger. Why you playing with that? It's that kryptonite. Oh, yeah, it's lit tonight. They sipping with the spray, they smoking with the pipe, they popping pills tonight, they catching feels tonight. That's crypto, 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 crypto tonight. That's that kryptonite. That's that kryptonite. You ain't living by his word, you ain't living right. That's that kryptonite. That's that kryptonite. You just living for the world, you ain't living, living. Dean Kane, God wants you to regain. Supernatural strength coming through that cape, what's with that cape? That case like Jesus, put him on, he frees us. Put him on, he empowers, devours, then showers us with his. Like a little bit of yeast is to that dough, that's like sin is to your soul. Switch that yeast out for his word, and you'll have bread of life to show. He the way, the truth, the life, like a thief up in the night. Coming back for sons and daughters, then the homies catch and fight. I'm yelling, Houston. I'm yelling, Houston. Come in, Houston, we have a problem. Hey, I appreciate y'all so much. My name's Destin. That's that crypt tonight. Oh yeah, it's lit tonight They sippin' with the spray They smokin' with the pipe They poppin' pills tonight They catchin' pills tonight Crypto, 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 crypto tonight Hey guys, thank you very much for coming. I'm Michelle Carmichael and I'm the area director for the Fellowship of Christian Athletes at the Emerald Coast. And this is Ken Lapie, and we're going to um, start the show off by just telling you a little bit about why we're here. This is the night of integrity. This is the night that we bring to celebrate what you guys have been doing in the community and into your schools and is bringing a presentation that the Sheriff's Department has sponsored along with All Sports and FCA. So I'd like to introduce you again to Ken Lapie and let's go ahead and let's get this night started. Thank you, Michelle. Wow. Good night already. Mr. Destin is really good, isn't he? Yeah. Just be, uh, count yourself lucky you didn't see me back here dancing. I was behind the curtain. Welcome, everybody. What a great crowd. Looks like we've got some Boys and Girls Club, maybe some sports teams out there. It's, the lights are bad. It's hard to see. Looks like some youth groups, some parents, maybe a couple of people who snuck in thinking it was Shakespeare. You got the wrong night, sir. That, that's tomorrow. As Michelle said, <laughs> as Michelle said, I'm Ken Lapie. I'm with the Okaloosa County Sheriff's Office. And I'm here on behalf of Sheriff Larry Ashley, who loves this event. And uh, he wants me to apologize to you that he can't be here. But he really has a passion for this event, so much that he sponsors it every year. We at the Sheriff's Office uh, have charity funds and seized funds. And, and this is an opportunity to give back to the community in a way that's gonna pay dividends in the future. So uh, the sheriff asked me to come in his behalf to welcome you here, to thank you for being here, to challenge you to pay attention, come into this with an open mind and an open heart. This is the night of integrity. Integrity is important, right? Yeah? If somebody said, hey, he's a man of integrity or she's a woman of integrity, you would look at that and, and take that as a compliment of the highest order, probably even better than he's good looking or he's muscular. I wouldn't know how those feel. I don't get those very much, but that's integrity. If somebody said you have integrity, that's a great compliment. And you know, integrity has a connection with law enforcement. We all want our cops to have integrity, right? So integrity, law enforcement goes together very well. Uh, one of the things that I do for the sheriff's office is I interview prospective uh, deputy sheriffs, uh, people that are looking for a job. And just between you and I, one of the questions that we ask every candidate is what are the most important values of a law enforcement officer and how do you demonstrate those values? Almost every time somebody says integrity. And, it, and, and they should say that. But then we say, okay, 
what is integrity? And they give you the big eyed look because integrity is kind of hard to define. Sometimes we say, well, it's telling the truth. Well, that's honesty. It's part of integrity, but it's not the whole thing. Integrity is just, diff it's, 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 yeah, it's the thing you recognize when you see it, but we may not know how to verbalize it. And, and I got a definition of integrity that's probably one of the best I've seen as far as biblical integrity goes. And I'm going to read it to you. It says, integrity is a way and manner of living that is true, honest, and moral with purpose. The state of being complete and undivided. That's a pretty good definition, isn't it? But it also seems like it's almost unattainable. That's, that's quite a standard for integrity. So I kind of broke it down and, and, and I had to do the Cliff's Notes. I don't know if you kids know what Cliff's Notes are, but that's when you're too lazy to read the whole book, you'd get the Cliff's Notes. So I, I made myself some Cliff Notes that integrity is the ability to recognize the truth, to live the truth, and to be complete. That's a goal. That's a great thing. So I think maybe that we've kind of defined integrity. Then the question comes up, how? How do I go from being this to be, from being me to, to being a man of integrity? Good question. Well, I'm reminded of when uh, Jesus, on his earthly ministry with his disciples, um, he, they're sitting down one evening, I guess it's an evening, an afternoon, and they're discussing, and Jesus is giving them some goals that he has for them, some outlines, some plans for their life. You know, God's got a plan for your life too, by the way. The disciples were just regular folks, just like you and I. They're famous now, but they were just regular guys back then. And Jesus was laying out some plans for them and some, some challenges and, some, and just kind of cluing them in on, on what he had in store for them. And, and then he said, ultimately, he's going uh, to heaven. He's going to prepare a place for them and, and they can come too. And, and you know the way. And then he got quiet, I imagine. And that one fella... There's always one in the crowd, right? You know who, who asked the question? Thomas. We call him Doubting Thomas, right? I think Thomas is just the guy that thinks what everybody else is thinking and he's dumb enough to say it. Thomas says, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? How? It's a good question. Jesus answered him. I think it's John 14, 6. Very simply, Jesus said, I am the way the truth and the life. If you look at the definition of integrity that we talked about, recognizing the truth, living the truth, and being complete, Jesus says he's the way, he's the truth, and he's the life. He is our way to a life of integrity. And I think, folks, that's what tonight's all about. And that's the goal. I think that we're gonna hear that from Brian here in a little while. God can take your life wherever you are right now and through his grace, turn you into a man or a woman of integrity that's going to make a long lasting difference, both here and for eternity. So that's our hope and prayer for you tonight, that tonight, the night of integrity is not just a name, but the night of integrity, maybe tonight can be a springboard for you to have a life of integrity. That's my prayer, my hope for you all, and God bless you, and I'm looking forward to hearing what comes next. Thank you all very much. Good evening. Welcome. We're so glad that you're here tonight. My name is Wade Humphreys. I'm the pastor of First Baptist Church, Fort Walton Beach, and we are thrilled to have some very, yes, thank you. We're, we're thrilled to have some very special guests tonight. Uh, Brian Head Welch and his daughter Jenea. So you guys come on out. Here they come. Yes. Come on out. Yes. With a cool walk. This is the perm. Hey, Check. Check. What's up? Hi guys. How you guys doing? We are stoked to be here. Yup. We're gonna start tonight. Uh, Brian's gonna pray for us, and then we're gonna sit down and talk a little bit and let you hear their story and uh, and how we're going to think about how their story intersects with your story tonight. So Brian, pray for us yes. and we'll get started. I know there's different types of people here. Maybe your life's doing good. Maybe you're having some pain in your life or maybe you're struggling with something deep like, you know, porn or drugs or something. 
I just love that there's a God that is not religious, mean, grumpy, old man in the sky up there waiting to go. Yep. He's just like, bring your junk to me. And then one day, all the junk's gone if you just walk with him. So Lord, thank you for who you are. You are so not religious like we say, like we think in our minds and like, you know, some of the more religious people put you out to be, Lord, that you are loving you're forgiving. We come, with, we come to you with our junk. You will get rid of it after just walking with you. It disappears. You know, Lord, sometimes we struggle over things again and again and again, but you never stop forgiving. So I just pray for everybody here that you would open their hearts, open their minds, take the guilt off of them, but give them the grace to deal with things in their lives that they need to in any hurt areas in any people's lives that you would touch, heal, and make everybody feel brand new when they walk out, Lord. Why not? Two or more gathered. You're here, Jesus. So do it. We believe you can. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brian. Well, we are so excited. We've been looking forward to this night for some time. And folks have been putting it together. And to have you guys here is just awesome. And so glad uh, everyone's here representing churches and FCA huddles. And, and uh, just thrilled that you are here. And we believe God's going to do something uh, in your life um, tonight. And so here's how I want to start, uh, Brian and Jenea. Uh, the Lord is using you, it seems, in this phase of your journey to really speak into other people's lives, to share your story, share your story, share your story. Um, do you feel a, a compulsion, Brian, to, to, to share uh, what God's done in your life and, and what's led you to this kind of this phase of your journey? It's a crazy situation because... When I, when she was six years old, Janae was six and I was in the band, I was like on every drug you can imagine besides heroin and I'm just living the life, but massively depressed and addicted, wanting out, but I didn't know how to get out. And so I, uh, I go to rehabs, I tried things and nothing worked. And I come to this church and I hear about Jesus that he comes inside of you and lives in you. And just what I said with the prayer, I tried it and it worked. And so I've been... I've been living this life for 14 years, you know, and I just, you know, it keeps, it's just so real. I keep saying that all day today of how real, real it is. And so I forgot your question. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you feel the Lord really compelling you to the part of your journey to share that story? Okay. Yeah. I was going there. Yeah. He interrupted me. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> um, so it's a crazy situation because I left the band. I raised her. She's amazing, as you can see now, inside and out. And uh, thank Thanks. you. Thanks. And uh, so he sends me back to the band. Everyone's like off any hard drugs, anything like that. There's no one's an alcoholic mess anymore. And uh, so I'm in a place navigating this thing with the Lord where he's placed me back in the situation where... You know, our movie just came out, and we're going to show a trailer of Loud Crazy Love. It's real, it's raw, it's honest, and there's interviews with some guys in my band that don't believe, and, you know, pre-believers, I guess I'd call them, <laughs> but um, they, uh, you know, they have different opinions, and it's just, it's just living life with, you know, sometimes life is messy, you know, and it's like, so I'm there, and yeah, the Lord's using it, and everybody knows I'm the Jesus guy, and, and the, everybody. And But it's not always like shoving it down people's throat. It's like this interview or this movie or this and that, you know, people ministering to them after the concert, just hanging out with them, praying with them. So it's pretty cool. It's a unique life that I live, though, right now. Amen. So, Jenea, all of a sudden, documentary, and you're speaking to audiences and congregations, and the Lord's using you in that way, and you've seen him use you in other people's lives. How would you uh, describe how you want the Lord to work tonight? What, what would you want the Lord to do tonight through you, through your dad, uh, in the students here tonight? Well, um, like he said, I, there's so many people here, so many different life circumstances, and I just hope that you guys find a little peace, maybe, and some hope, and some, I don't know, like we, we have been through so much together in our journey of life or whatever, and I just hope that you guys can relate a little bit and be able to, I don't know, pick something from it and maybe get the tools, you know what I mean? If, if you're battling, to, battling with depression, anxiety, whatever, that you'll be able to see how we came out the other side and you'll be able to grab something from it, so. Amazing. Brian, 
how does uh, a kid in California, it's where you were born and raised, correct? Uh, Bakersfield, California. How does a kid in California become a rock star? Just give us, give us a little bit of that journey, uh, how, you, how you got into music and, and, and were launched into stardom. Well, you have to be really born with a lot of awesomeness. But um, I'm just joking. It was all luck. Now, me, uh, I just, you know, when I was 10 years old, my mom bought me one of the most important gifts for Christmas in my life. It was a round Frisbee looking thing and it was all black. And I put it on this little stick and I play it in the record. It was a record. That's what the records are called. Oh wait, they're kind of coming back in style, aren't they? You're young. They sure yeah? are. So I started the record and it went back in black. It was ACDC back in black. And so Two months later, I had a guitar in my house and I was trying to learn ACDC songs. And I just, I spent my childhood, teenage years and all that just trying to learn music. I loved metal music. And so we lived two hours away from Los Angeles where the movies are and the bands, you know, a lot of the record companies were there. It's a lot different now, you know, but Hollywood was it. And so we moved to Hollywood when I was 18 and just, you know, formed, formed corn um, underneath a pier and came up with the name. We lived, so Bakersfield, the, it's, it's ironic, but Buck Owens, the famous country star, was from Bakersfield. So that's what Bakersfield, that's what put uh, Bakersfield on the map. And, oh, oh yeah, there's a few others too. Yeah, you got it. Merle Haggard, wasn't he from there too? Come on, come on. Merle Haggard too, right? I don't know my country, oh. sorry. But, uh, country? <laughs> but uh, um, so they had a, a radio show called Corn, K-O-R-N. On, that, on their show, Hee Haw. And so I think our singer kind of had that in his mind and some other things, but uh, we called the band Corn and, and, and we just played around LA. And you know, that's the best thing to do if you want to make it, you go where the record companies are and just play and try to get buzz. We got the buzz, we got signed. And then it was just kind of like the, the business people we had was just so good. And uh, they put us on tour with the right bands and our singer was just all about singing about depression and letting emotions out that people didn't do back then. So we caught on with a lot of different people. And so it just grew and grew. When did you realize and this was, this was big time, that you'd made it big time? When was that, that moment? I'd say I was in TRL. Um, MTV had a show called TRL when they played music videos back in the day. It's still on. Oh, they, is it? Oh, they rebooted it. That's cool. So it's all like uh, Travis Scott and all these, uh, make Nicki Minaj and all them. Uh, what? <laughs> well, they don't play corn no knows. more. We're old now. <laughs> anyway. Billie Eilish, that's who. Billie Eilish. But uh, so um, I remember the day we were, we were on TRL like every day and we got voted number one. We were in the top like five always with Blink-182 and Limp Bizkit and Eminem and all these, all these artists and we were thrown in there. And I remember I called my dad after TRL and I was like, dad, our album just went number one. And, uh, he was, he was just, cause he used to tell me you need to have a backup plan because not too many people make it. And he wasn't mean about it or discouraging. He was just like trying to be real. And, uh, he was just like, wow. And just telling my dad that that day, it was, it was a trip. So uh, there are a lot of good things about being a star, people knowing you and knowing your name and being famous and, of course, financial implications and, and all of that, that's good. Uh, there are some negatives as well. Um, so tell us, you, you mentioned a little bit in the opening, but tell us a little bit about how you began to see things go in a wrong direction. Um, well, I'll just say, so here's an example of the good and bad. Like, we, we're at the MTV Awards and the good was we won an award you know, one of my heroes, the Motley Crue drummer, Tommy Lee, presented it to us with Christina Aguilera. And so it was just like a high moment. We go to an after party and it's, there's like not too many people there. Paul McCartney and Madonna are talking at the bar and I'm just like, I drove like a beat up Toyota three years before that. And I'm like, how did I get here, you know? And then we end up in the bathroom uh, doing drugs and the whole night turns into a big fight with my ex and, and that's the bad of it, you know? And so every day there's, um, the stagehands that load in the gear, you know, they always, someone there always has a connect for the hard drugs, the cocaine or the, you know, acid or, or X or whatever it was back then. 
And so that's the downside and the temptations and the, and all the, the people that treat you like you're, you know, a God, you're just, you're famous, you know, you're on TV every day. They love your music. And so that, that it'll pull you down if you let it. And so, yeah, that's, I guess I could sum it up like that with, with the, the differences. When did you realize? And the winner and is Corn Freak on a Leash. Ladies and gentlemen, the trailer. Are we playing this now, guys? Cute, huh? I have plenty of memories from when my dad was in corn. I love you, Daddy. Uh, Peekaboo. It changed my perspective on how I saw, like, love. Fielding Jonathan and head from the band Corn. It's like the ultimate way of everything you could ever want. <laughs> I was up there making the drinks, chopping lines, rolling joints. I'm a new person. I'm going to be a great dad. Today, get down, please. I'll just have a couple beers. I saw, like, naked chicks, like, walking around. He was a master at hiding it. I was just scared that I was going to screw up the kid like I was screwing up myself. I had addiction to meth, methamphetamine. All of the other kids had their mom and dad come to Mother's Day or Father's Day. I couldn't stop being bad to my body. I couldn't stop these addictions. <laughs> I had become an animal. I just looked up and I just said, Father, I can't pray when I'm on drugs. Do anything you want to my life. How do I pay a phone bill? How can you change so suddenly? How do I know this is real? Life to be a He's like, Janae, I'm quitting corn. I'm going to stay home. And I'm like, wait, is that even allowed? I was devastated. God's telling me to do this. And God's telling me, I'm like, that was an act of love for himself and his daughter. But I immediately started making bad choices. He had been physical, punching holes in walls. She just couldn't connect with anybody. I assumed things were going to be different. People offered her drugs. I'm like, dang it. I got physical. I flipped tables. I can't control my rage. I'm stressed out. I just wanted someone to realize I'm hurting. She says, I cut myself because of you. And I said, I hate you. You're a whore. I gave up everything for you. My daddy was a rock and roll. Everybody that doesn't live their life like this, that's who's crazy. My daddy was a rock and roll. Well, the, the timing, the Thank timing you. was actually good because you were telling us uh, sort of what that lifestyle was like, what it was leading to in your own life. It helps us to pivot back to Jenea and uh, her story. At what point um, in the rise of corn and in your affiliation with them was Jenea born? Um, it was pretty much right before we got as big as we got. I mean, TRL, the explosion, she was born right at that. In fact, her birth into the world was announced on MTV that I had to cancel the OzFest, and Ozzy said, who's having the baby, him or his wife? Because I had to cancel it. He was mad that I canceled it. I'm like, like you wouldn't be home for Jack's, you know, birth or whatever so she was uh, she had a pretty big announcement into the world <laughs> well, good impersonation so what it was what was it like so what was it like Jenea uh, growing up uh, with a famous rock star dad oh, what were those those years like the early years um I mean y'all to be honest like there were really fun times um I don't know th there was times when I would go on tour with him and they would take me to all sorts of playgrounds and I got to like watch the crowd as he played and that was always fun but man like I saw a lot of stuff backstage that I probably shouldn't have saw at like three years old I'm sure a lot of you can relate to that just being exposed to stuff at a young age and um yeah so that was hard and not having consistent people in my life like my mom left when I was three. She, um, she dealt with all sorts of drugs, drinking, um, trauma in, uh, when she was a young girl. And so she left when I was three. And so I went on tour with him. And so I didn't have my mama. I didn't have any consistency, you know, besides him. Um, so it had, its, it had its ups and its downs. 
I want to say something though about the road. Me and her, like, we we don't argue, but we're like, man, because I tried. You know, I brought her out in the road, and I didn't party. You know, she was a little girl, and I had like these bodyguards that one of them had tattooed "Hellbound" on his head, and uh, he would get the stroller and like roll her in the stroller, right? And it's crazy looking dude. Yeah, guess, dude. And so like they were trying to help me, but sometimes like if someone brought her by the stage, there's and back then, you know, we were young, you know, in our late 20s and everything, maybe there'd be uh, a girl lift her shirt up at the show a long time ago or something, maybe she saw that, and backstage, maybe she saw something, like, but it wasn't, like, I was protecting her, you know, but it's, yeah, things slipped, a really good job. things slipped by because of the crazy world we lived in, I guess. I saw a video, Jenea, um, and I'm sure this comes out more in the documentary, but uh, the video was the effect of you were at a swim meet mm -hmm. and uh, a family friend was recording this, the, the swim meet um, for Brian to watch and he's he kind of giving commentary and you win these medals and he's not there, mm -hmm. which was a, a pretty common occurrence growing up with a famous dad. So speak to that. What was that like? I mean, uh, when you're a kid, you need the mother and the father, really, to, to really um, learn bonding and those, those nurturing aspects, you know? Um, you, you really need your mother and father. And so um, there were a lot of things uh, that I um, did as a kid, like almost acting out, like I would, I would cry and throw tantrums and uh, I don't know, it, there was... It really affected me as I got older, you know what I mean? Not having, like, seeing my dad every day and my mom, like, giving me a bath and brushing my hair. And, like, you know, it, um, it really affected me as I started to grow up. The Lord used that, Brian, that, that tender spot, uh, not being there for her uh, in your own life. And so let's talk about, let's talk about the turning point. Uh, when, you, when you began to realize uh, you were in trouble, with the, with the drugs and the addiction. And, you know, there's a, there's a story I love in Luke 15 about the prodigal son. And there's a moment where he is, he's lost everything. And it says, he came to his senses. Uh, when was that moment for you? Man, there's so many of those stories I relate to. <laughs> you know, those, you can find your story in the Bible. It's crazy. But uh, um, it, was, it was the moment, yeah, where she, her mom was out of our lives. And I know that, you know, some of you don't have both your your parents, you know, maybe, and we're, we're living proof you can get through it, even though it's, it's very hard, you know, I know it's, it's, it's hard not having one of them there, but, you know, naturally it's, it's, that works best, but that's not reality for some of us. And so, but she, um, so there was a moment where, you know, those moments that you just talked about, the swimming, I wasn't there for her. And I, when I was on the road, I'm just thinking about her all the time, like, oh my gosh, she just has these wonderful people who are my friends, you know, taking care of her, but, or my parents who are wonderful, great people, but, you know, the kids are asking her, where's your parent, where's your mommy and daddy, you know, why does your Grammy take you to school, or, you know, things like that, and I would just hear those stories, and just my heart would break, and so I would think about just, man, it would be so cool to be out of this lifestyle of touring nonstop, and, but I, in my mind, I'm like, this is, this is a dream come true. I can't walk away from this. So, so that, that, um, I guess that tug of war inside of me of wanting to, but not, I just, i dove deeper into drugs cause I was just caught in this. I didn't know what to do cause I was miserable out there. I kept thinking about her. And meanwhile, uh, I didn't have the strength to leave the band or like, you don't leave your job. That's a, that's a gift, you know? And so that's when I got the drugs got bad. I, I, uh, I was on meth for two years. I took it all over the world with me and my hidden my suitcase and could have been thrown in jail somewhere. At the end of that world tour, I went and uh, these guys invited me to go to church. I was like, oh, I don't, I don't want to see Ned Flanders, man. You know, I'm just thinking like, that I, that's what I thought at the time. I had no like reference. I just thought of those that's people. That's from The Simpsons, if you, you know, don't know. Those people that judge, judged us that say rock music's of the devil outside of the corn concerts. That's all I wrapped in my But this one guy built monster trucks and he built all these hot rods and he invited me to the church. He was a Christian. I was like, I'll go with him. Mm -hmm. So I went and, uh, and this, guy, uh, this guy was up there with his jeans, you know, not dressed like a holy 
roller or nothing in my mind, you know? And he was just like, look, Jesus is real. I used to be an alcoholic. I threw my wife against the wall, messed up her back so bad that she left me. And I begged Jesus to heal her and give me her back and I would give him my life. And he, he healed her and gave her back to me. And that was 20 years ago. And I'm listening to him going, whoa, he really believes this Jesus guy. <laughs> and so, you know, and, and I just heard that, how, how he comes in spiritually and he starts to change you. And so I was like, what do I got to lose? My money can't fix me. The kid needs a father, so I need to try something. So I lifted my hand and I, and I tried it. I, I, I just said, Lord, come into my life. And he just said, the guy goes, look, I can't fix you with one prayer. You go home and you talk to him, put him to the test, see what he does. Say, Jesus, if you're real. So I went home in my drug closet. I had my meth like lined out and I just said, Jesus, if you're real, like that guy said, take these drugs for me because I can't stop. And that kid out there stuck to the TV set because I, I neglect her or whatever to the TV. She needs a parent. You do it like that guy said. I got real with him, you know? And I snorted a line after the prayer because I was an addict, you know? And then within about three weeks, I had thrown all my drugs away. I gave my life to him and, uh, and I, I just, I was, I was drug free. I, was, I stopped drinking everything. And I had like one slip up or two, that was it, you know? And I don't, I don't want them to miss that little, the little part of your story, someone invited you to church. I mean, you're probably around some other Christians that maybe didn't invite you to church. Maybe they were intimidated by you or thought he, he, would, never, he would never come, but just the power of a personal invitation. I mean, that, that's, that was the beginning, so that's, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, so, Jenea, you, your dad meets Jesus, and everything just gets instantly better, and you live happily ever after, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> we wish, don't we all wish? <laughs> Literally. So tell us, tell us kind of the next part of the story. Your, your dad meets the Lord and he's trying to become a, a father that you need. And tell us uh, how things um, went from there. Well, if you've been raised in the Christian church, you know what it's like. Like PK kids and, you know, it's, it's definitely... It's, it's its own thing, really. Um, so basically, I went from just this kid in this like crazy whatever life to like moving to Phoenix, Arizona in the desert and like we're Christians now and we, and we listen to K-Love and like, and like I go to like a private, like it was like night and day. <laughs> and so- like Corn to K-Love like overnight. <laughs> that was so good. And so. So yeah, it was, it was definitely, um, I mean, I was six though, so I just went with it. Six year olds don't really have an opinion. They just experience stuff. And and like, you know what? I'll just say with you, like we, we, we loved it together. You're like, Oh, I love that song. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, and I would be crying on the way cause I, all these songs would touch me and I'm like, Phew, and she's like, daddy, are you okay? No, it's just the Holy Spirit. Like, you know? And so it was fun, <laughs> but looking back, it's just funny, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Let's fast forward to your teenage years um, and some of the implications from your past begin to kind of catch up and, and tell, us, tell us that story and tell us uh, kind of uh, the journey you went through. Well, um, when I hit middle school, y'all know middle school is just its own monster, but like um, I think around 11 or 12, I was in sixth grade and I started to realize that um, the things I went through were pretty painful. Like, um, my mom, number one, her not being there was really rough and having people in and out of my life say, say that they're going to be there and then leave, you know, was very difficult. Um, I got bullied a little bit in school, but I bully kids too. So I was, Man, so can I just, she, wow. you like, I would get a call all the time. Janae is punching the boys. Because well, she got would, bullied and she punched back. They would call me fat. They would like, they would like, they, oh yeah, yeah, you're fat. And so, so I'm glad like, you punched them. <laughs> Sorry, don't and do so, that, kids. Yeah, don't, don't punch other kids. Um, and so I don't know, just going through the regular middle school stuff, but also dealing with those, um, the trauma that I went through as a kid. Um, I started to, I don't know, recognize that I was hurting and uh, was dealing with some depression. And sometimes I didn't want to get up in the morning. And I was like you know, that was, that was new to me. And so, um, yeah, middle school, I just experienced a lot of depression. Um, 
uh, I, I met some kids who were into self-harm, like um, burning and cutting and stuff. And I don't know, I liked that because it was kind of like relieving and kind of like this, I didn't know how to express that I was hurting. So I was like, ooh, yeah, like that sounds like almost like a, like a sense of um, telling people that I'm hurting, I guess. And so, so just de depression, uh, self-harm, suicidal thoughts, the whole, whole thing, so. And so, Brian, you're a single dad, and, and you know she's going through some struggles. And how do you begin to handle this? How do you, how do, how do you help her? What what'd you do? Well, about for the first year of walking with the Lord, it felt like the honeymoon phase, I guess, where happily ever after was like what I thought was there. And then next thing you know, next thing you know, I got burned by some uh, business partners that were Christian business Christian, partners. And... Uh, they, they burned me and I lost all my money and, uh, and that was fine. I'm like, okay, God, I've learned that a lot of people go through this thing to, to learn faith, you know, because you take care of, you know, people, you don't got to depend on money. It's like, you don't, you can't worship God and money. It says in the Bible. So I'm like, okay, well, you'll take care of me. I, I got stressed out, but cool. When she started self-harming and all that, I'm, I'm like, okay, that's enough. I lost everything. I lost my car, lost my house and all that. But losing my daughter to this stuff, that, that's the one thing I asked God. I was like, take care of her. She's all you got. Keep her close to you. And she was as far away from him as I could, you know, think or imagine. And so I was like, I mean, my faith wasn't tested about whether God was real, but my faith was tested like, why would do I want to walk with a God like this if this is what life is going to be like, you know? I was expecting happily ever after, and I got this. And so, but I held on. I was like, okay, I'm going to trust you. And uh, he would give me lights of hope, you know? And, and so things did eventually get better, but it was rough, man. When it's your kids, it's, it's a whole new, another story. So, Janae, a similar question that I asked your dad. Uh, when was that come to your senses moment? When was that, that turning point? Well, um, I went uh, to boarding school. <laughs> I went to boarding school. It's called Awakening Youth. I went there when I was uh, 14. It was January 2013. And um, basically, uh, Awakening is this uh, school for girls, but that they want to open up to boys too. It's f for girls 13 to 23. And basically, we just like live life together. I just, we get um, some counseling, but it's mainly just life skills. Like we basically like did school together. We did chores together, which I never did chores. <laughs> he didn't make me do nothing. I was so spoiled. I tried. And so, yeah, I just, I was like, no, <laughs> I was so, ugh, what a brat. But, oh, hang on just a second. And so, sorry. <laughs> um, Tell us how you got to the, to yeah. the, to the ministry. Yeah. yeah, and so um, basically the boarding school, uh, I was able to just have some consistency and just learn how to do normal life stuff like like eat, eat my breakfast at like you know eat breakfast like kids don't eat breakfast in the morning you know and and just like take care of myself and uh, I don't know just choose a better path for me and so I think while I was there I got um, I met an, an amazing woman named Tiffany and she didn't force any kind of relationship on me like some women did in my when I was younger like you know what I mean like the like the weird like I'm gonna be your mom now like the, like she wasn't like that she was like I'll have uh, like I'm here if you want a relationship with me but if you don't that's cool too I'm here to help so okay how did you get to this to this uh, arrangement did you choose that as a teenager can I go yes <laughs> Yeah, let's not, let's not pass that by. Um, when she was at her worst, like we were talking about the, uh, the self-harm and the suicidal threats and the depression and all that, it manifested in like rebellion and anger and rage and towards me, towards life and everything. And so I got to this point, 2012, where I needed to, to uh, I needed help. Like um, one of our therapists called, called it the nuclear button. And so I had to push it and I started looking and I found a place Awakening Youth. So after Christmas 2013, after New Year's, I said, oh, we're going to go check this place out, just visit. Because we had met them on the road before. They brought their, their students or whatnot to a, uh, a solo show of mine because 
they had heard my story and they liked my story. So I met some of the kids and I met the organizers. So I was just like, we're going to go visit them. So we go there and I'm like, we look at the place and Jenea is like standing behind the director. She's like, let's get out of here. Let's go. And I just looked at her and I said, Jenea, I'm not, we're not visiting. I'm enrolling you here today. And she lost it. She, she broke, she broke right in front of my eyes. And then what made me break and I just start bawling. I go up and do the paperwork and I don't know if you want to add to like, that. Like what day. else would a 14 year old do when she's not getting what she wants? <laughs> like, you know, but that's a huge deal. Cause it was just me and you know, it was me and her for years. And I was like, you're going to live here and I'm leaving. And that was like, that shattered her whole paradigm of what was her life was and and i and I, I felt bad because i didn't want her to think i was abandoning her like oh i'm done with you you know you're you're a bad child you know i was just like you don't understand this is this is to help you and i'm not going nowhere and i was just starting back with corn then I'm, I'm like i'll leave again in a second if you need me to you know if if it comes to the like and uh, so we planted her there and she got over the shock of it and she started, I just prayed, Lord, let her accept being there because she needs it. She needs to be around women. And be before that, she toured with my solo band. Before I joined Corn. it was all guys in my band. She did her homework at like 2 a.m. And on, you know what I mean? And it was not good for her. So she needed feminine like surrounding and that was it. And when I went to pick her up the first visit, she said, Dad, I'm supposed to be here. And she didn't ask me to take her out one time face to face at all. So that was a, uh, that was cool. And she's still there six years later. She's working for the school a bit and yeah, <laughs> going to college, online college. And uh, now she's, you know, helping other people that were like her, other kids and everything. And it's, so if you just wait it out, when it looks like God has abandoned you and failed you, if you just stand there and say, Lord, I trust you. You said this, but it looks like this. You probably say a little bit more intense words than that, like I did, but I waited it out and look, here's the prize. You know, our family, we don't, we don't have blow up moments. We have a, a normal uh, relationship now, you know, and it's, it's amazing. Awesome. Awesome. And the part of that story that is just really compelling is the fact you said, I need help. I need help. And you looking back saying, I needed help, you know, and, and I guess the message for uh, maybe someone here tonight is if you're in a situation and, and, and you don't see any way out, you need to ask for help. You need to talk to somebody. You know, there are folks around you that care about you and love you. And so I just love that part of the story. You know? It's so important because some people we we're talking about, um, Shane Gibson, uh, is a, is a man that was from here and went to school here and I talked to his, his coach and uh, you know we, we all go through things but I think Shane was in a place at one point where he you know he didn't reach out we we're talking about people that don't reach out it's so important to just talk to someone you know no matter how uncomfortable it is it can like be the 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 link to your to your next life to your not to the afterlife but you, to your next new life your next season of life or whatnot you know and so it's very important I'm glad you brought that up wonderful story powerful uh it's just so good for us to to hear that tonight just see the transformation right before our eyes and not just transformation of individuals but tr transformation of a family and a relationship and and how he takes you know broken people and then begins to use them and gives them purpose and meaning uh, so what would you say Jenea, uh from here on out uh, i know you may not know the specifics but what, what do you feel like god's purpose is for you um Purpose. His purpose. Well, I'm kind of a, a weird one where I think that he, he, he sets up a lot of possibilities, you know what I mean? And we get to choose whatever we, that's, that's um, how I kind of see things. But I don't know, like I really, I really love like young people and teenagers and I just feel for them and like high school's hard and kids are mean and I just, I, I feel for kids who are struggling with depression and bullying and stuff and so I think no matter what I end up doing, you know, I'd like to be able to help kids and know that there's like, there's a light <laughs> at the end of anything you're going through, so. And uh, she, back when you were 14, it looked like there would be no light ever, huh? And so you're 20 now. And so, but did it look like just all dark 
and like you wouldn't like you're gonna be like that way forever right yeah I, I feel like with my um, depression it, it shows its head in so many ways but for me it was like this sucks I want to leave <laughs> like this this is trash I'm out and so um, so I think once I realized that this is the, like this life is worth living and you're worth living and people are beautiful and like have stuff to offer you know what I mean you have something to offer I think that sharing that message is so important to me so and I just want to say for any any you youngsters out there that are going and you see just you know darkness or you feel that just please remember our story that it gets better I promise it gets better and um, if you want if you want to see more of our story our movies coming out um, June 11th is going to be uh, online and whatnot so if you just check it out there is some language in it you know but you know, I know you guys have Netflix accounts, so, but uh, for the, for the, you know, some of you young people, of course, ask your parents, but it's real, it's raw, and it's going to help people, you know, but we just needed it to be real and raw. We felt that's what God wants us to do, so. Okay. So, I'll give you uh, each a chance just to share kind of a last word um, with our, um, with our students and uh, volunteers and teachers and coaches and uh, youth ministers and pastors, uh, what would you want them to, to, to know as you, as you leave tonight? What's one thing you'd want them to know? I think I, I, think I summed up my thing just a second ago, so we're going to put, put the spotlight on you. What did you got? Well, um, I mean, basically, I kind of sound like too. Basically, just like if you're struggling, or if you, you know, or if you're not, like you know what I mean. Uh, life just happens. Like, like depression comes, and sadness comes, and hard, hard stuff comes. And so, just remember that you're worth fighting for, you know, and you have something to offer, you know. Like, don't, don't give up on yourself because you're worth it. And um, if you ever feel like life is tasteless and it's hard to get up like find something you're passionate about and if you can't find something for yourself follow someone who is passionate about something and then just follow them until you find your own thing yeah that's contagious if you follow contagious. someone that's a, a great role model and everything oh i got something you got to let go of the people that are negative influence around your life and it yeah it's so big man yes and that's not that's not to say that it's forever. It might just be for a season, just to, you know what I mean? Because it's toxic. Toxic people will bring you down. And you can love them, but you can come back around once you get better to them, you know? Because I did that with my, when I left the band, they were, it was toxic. Those guys were partying like crazy. I was partying like crazy. I left, eight years later, I go back, they're all like remarried, having new kids, and everyone's, you know what I'm saying? So it was a circle thing that happened. And so don't be afraid. To, to just say goodbye for, for a season to people. And, you know, my, my number one thing is God is so real. He's real. He's so real. And this whole thing is about, yes, he wants a relationship. So take all your junk to him, man. Just tell him everything good and bad about your life and tell him your disappointments about what he, you feel like how maybe he like you feel like he let you down and everything just be real with him because i promise you he's not gonna in the end you know he'll turn everything around and he'll be like see how i didn't let you down there i know you thought it because there was it was a long waiting period but so yeah just just draw near to him man draw near to the lord because he died for a relationship you know he's not ready to pound your head for every mistake he, he died to have a relationship for you so thank you guys very much that's, awesome. That's the team. Um, we're going to pray in just a second, but uh, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for being here and making time in your busy lives to just come down and, and pour into the lives of the folks gathered here. Uh, the Lord's using you uh, in mighty ways, and we trust he's going to continue to do that. So thank you for letting the Lord use you. It's awesome. Let's, let's give him a hand for, for coming and being with us tonight. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Much love, you guys. Let's just keep standing, just keep standing just for a moment, and let me just ask you just to bow your head and close your eyes. We're going to just wrap up our time tonight, but we want to just consider what the Lord is saying to us, how he's speaking into our lives, how he's using the story of Brian and Jenea to, to intersect our story and help us to think about 
uh, our relationship with the Lord or our need for a relationship with the Lord. So just bow your heads and close your eyes just for a minute. And I, I want to ask you this question ac across the room. Uh, what has the Lord said to you tonight? What decision do you need to make? Maybe you're here and you're a believer in Christ, but maybe you were just kind of moved by Brian's last word, that maybe there's some negative influence in your life that's kind of pulling you away from, from uh, closeness with the Lord, and you need to kind of put some, some wise barriers in place and, and, and hang around the right kind of folks. Maybe that's a decision God wants you to make tonight, or... Or maybe uh, you know the Lord, and, but you've just kind of been coasting through life and, and you, you've seen tonight the sense of purpose uh, that Brian and Jenea have. And you want the Lord to use you like that. You want him to use your story to help other folks. And so maybe you just need to ask the Lord to just use you to impact others and impact those um, around you. Maybe you're here and you're a believer and you know somebody that's really hurting, sort of like uh, we heard about the teenage years, those difficult years, and you know someone that's going through some, through some difficult things, and they just need someone to show them they care, and maybe right now you can pray for them and ask God for an opportunity to, to just speak hope and, and, and peace in their life through Christ. And, and maybe you're here tonight, uh, and you don't know the Lord. You're far from God, and you know it because the Holy Spirit is showing you that right now. You do, do not have a personal relationship with God. Here's what I want you to know. Here's what I want everybody to know tonight. Maybe you walked in this room and you did not truly believe that God loves you. But I want to remind you that the Bible says in Romans 5, 8, that God demonstrates or God proves his love for us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. As Brian just said, the cross is the supreme demonstration of God's love for you. Jesus loves you so much, he went to the cross and took your sin and your shame and your guilt and the punishment that you deserve. He did that for me as well. He died for our sins. That's how much he loves us. So don't leave tonight wondering if God loves you. God loves you. And Jesus died on the cross, but then early on the third day, he rose from the grave. And he's alive today, and the Bible says he is mighty to save. Mighty to save. And we want you to understand tonight that salvation is not something you have to work for or achieve or earn. Salvation is a free gift that you receive. The Bible says... And we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And so maybe tonight you need to receive that free gift. Invite Jesus into your life by faith to be your personal Lord and Savior. And just like we saw exemplified in two lives tonight, you can't imagine the difference that Jesus will make. Maybe you're in a place of hopeless or hopelessness or darkness or confusion, or depression, or meaninglessness, or whatever the case may be, listen to me, Jesus makes a difference. He forgives you, and then he comes to live on the inside of you and changes you from the inside out. And so, if you need to be rescued tonight, if you need to be saved, Jesus is here. And you can invite him into your life tonight. So even right now, as our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed, I'm going, to, I'm going to pray in just a moment to close our time. But as our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed, if you need to make a decision, if you want to talk to somebody, maybe tonight, tonight you want to receive the Lord, or, or maybe you just need someone to pray with you over a certain area, something going on in your life. Maybe there's some things happening that are pretty dark and you need to talk to somebody. You need to reach out for help. Uh, here's the deal. Tonight, right across the front, we've got some volunteers and some folks that will receive you and will pray with you and, uh, and want to know what the Lord's doing in your life. And so I'm going to ask you to do this. And this is, this is a bold step. But right now, in the quietness of this moment, as our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed, if you need to make some sort of decision, if you need to be saved, if you need to pray with somebody, talk to somebody, uh, recommit your life to Jesus, whatever God's doing, right now, just slip out of your seat, come down to the front. There's people down here to receive you. Just slip out of your seat, come to the front right now. Right now. Just come on down. There's no music playing. It's just you and the Lord. Just come on down to the front right now. Just come one of these folks to the front and there we go. Anybody else right now?
Come on down to the front. Yeah, come on down. Come on, guys. Come on down. People down here at the front to receive you. Right down here. Right down here. Anybody else? I mean, wow, all these people in this room and the Lord's giving you the courage to just come down to the front and talk to somebody. That's pretty awesome, isn't it? That's awesome. It's right now. We're not going to tarry long tonight, but just... Come on down. There's folks down here that could care about you and want to talk to you. Got two young ladies here. Some of our youth ministers, youth workers right down here, these two young ladies. Come on down. Who can talk to these two young ladies right here? Need some, need some folks down here. All right. Good deal. Anybody else? Anybody else? Let's bow our heads and let's pray together. Father in heaven, you are awesome. What a privilege, what a joy to gather in this place to hear a powerful story of transformed lives. Lord, we, we, we see it right before our eyes. We see how you change lives. We're grateful for Brian and Jenea and their ministry and the platform you've given them to speak into others' lives and the way you're using them and and using them to encourage others and help others. That's, that's incredible. We thank you for that. Lord Jesus, thank you for your life-changing power. We thank you tonight that even as we gather, there are some in this room that are responding to what you're doing in their heart. And I pray, God, that you'd encourage them in these moments and help them to nail down whatever decision it is you would have them to make. Lord, we're grateful tonight for uh, All Sports Association and FCA that that put together an event like this. We're grateful, Lord, for a community that cares about their young people. And God, I pray that you'd use their continued efforts. God, I pray that the ministry of FCA would, would prosper and you would show that ministry favor and that they'd see multitudes of lives changed on our school campuses. Pray, bless the churches represented here, Lord, the youth ministers, the pastors, the adult volunteers, the students. God, I pray you would just bless them in mighty, mighty ways. And God, give us all that, that burning desire to want to help others, to show others that we care, to show others the love of Jesus. Lord, give us a deep sense of meaning and purpose. As your word says, let our light shine before men that they may see our good works and glorify you who is in heaven. So Lord, we thank you for this night. We thank you for the way you work in our lives. We love you. We praise you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you so much for coming. Great night. Let's, let's give the Lord a hand. Amen. God is good. You're dismissed. Thank you for coming.